Risk management is at the heart of what we do. Our deep-rooted industry and technical expertise enables us to manage the unique risks your business faces. The coronavirus pandemic is showing us how to live online and business is increasingly having to adapt to this. But does it make firms more vulnerable? I'm Bronwyn Seaborn and today we're discussing cybercrime. That's as we kick off the third episode of the third season on the role of insurance series brought to you by Suntum Specialist Insurance. My guests today are Simon Coleman, Managing Executive of Digital and Financial Lines at SHA Risk Specialist and Simon Campbell-Young, CEO of my cyber DNA. And speaking of how businesses are changing, they of course are joining me via Zoom and not in studio as usual. Gents, thanks so much for your time today. So let's get straight into it. Cybercrime, if we have to put South Africa into um, a global context here, how do we rank in terms of the number of incidents of cybercrime in the country? Yeah, I, I, I'll handle that. Uh, thank you and, and hello to everybody and, and thanks for having us. Um, bizarrely, South Africa ranks quite highly. Um, we, we're relevant on the global scale. Uh, we're tracking against the global scale. Um, I think probably it's, it's more apt to say that we're tracking against the, the sub-Saharan territory, but uh, some stats put us um, right up there in the top five in terms of cybercrime at the moment. You, you know, Simon, sorry, I can, I can add to that too. Um, there was a report produced by Norton's last year um, where they said that Africa uh, takes the takes number one spot in terms of the number of phishing emails uh, that are transmitted. And that was before the pandemic. So I can only imagine it went up exponentially since then. OK, so South yeah. Africa is really facing quite a problem um, in terms of cybercrime. If we drill down further into it, do you have any insight into how many companies faced um, incidents of cybercrime, say, in the last year? Um, Bronwyn, we did a survey uh, last year where we chatted to 700 business owners and 30%, these were randomly selected, uh, not clients of ours, and 30% of them said that they'd had a cyber attack uh, in the last 24 months. Uh, the number was 25% for those that had had a ransomware attack. So it's a significant number. Um, and I, I've heard Simon say before, uh, you know, there the are only two types of businesses out there, those that have been hacked and those that don't know that they've been hacked yet. Um, and I think the survey really illustrated that quite clearly. So it's, it's a big number and it's a growing number. So yeah, I mean, if I can, if I can just sure. add to that, um, um, you know, a lot of the times it's, it's really just about the policing of cybercrime. So generally, cyber criminals will gravitate to areas where the policing is potentially lax or the laws aren't quite as defined, and therefore they'll look to take advantage in territories where you know, they see easy loopholes. Yeah, so that's one of the things that um, stands to South Africa's disadvantage and why hackers love us so much. What are some of the other factors that leaves us vulnerable? Uh, I think that um, certainly more recently we found that people are working off-site. Um, and I know a lot of businesses also uh, let their employees use their own devices during this kind of remote working environment. Uh, and there's just a general lack of awareness, uh, which is interesting because South Africans really do, I guess, or, or maybe it's because we're so exposed to crime as a country that we've kind of become numb to to these things. And, and, uh, and I guess, you know, something that doesn't involve any violence often doesn't make the papers. Um, so there's a level of complacency there that I think also plays in the hacker's favor. And, and all of these things add to this, this, these tremendous numbers of, of incidents that we were talking about. You speak to how vulnerable we are and, you know, the stats you have to back it up. We are in a vulnerable position. Companies are in a vulnerable position. But do they realize it? Do you think companies understand just how at risk they are? I think... I think companies are starting to understand it. I think people are starting to see a massive increase in 
cybercrime. Obviously, companies are now starting to push for cyber awareness amongst staff. Um, families are starting to push for cyber awareness in and amongst you know, family members. But I think a lot of the time, people don't really know what they don't know. So therefore, there's this unknown element and people you know, don't see it. Um, it's not tangible. It's not touchable a lot of the time. So they just, in, in, in a large degree, they're just unaware. But we see um, a massive increase, specifically over this COVID-19 period. We're seeing a huge increase in cyber awareness. We're seeing a huge increase in terms of uh, the cyber insurance space. Um, and I think that if anything, um, COVID has driven um, awareness around what is actually happening on the internet. Because as Simon pointed out, people are working from home. Um, people are connecting back into the office via unsecured VPNs or unsecured uh, connectivity from a home router or from a device. And, and that's where the hidden dangers lie. I also think that, that I mean, so, so when we did our survey, 45% of businesses didn't seem to think you know, they were under threat. And, and I think a major contributor to that, Bronwyn, is that the regulations around the protection of personal information um, really haven't been put into full effect, which means there's a lot of hacking going on, but companies aren't disclosing it. And of course, because that's not happening, it's not like in Europe or the US where, you know, you open up a newspaper, whoever still reads papers, or you, you log on to your browser or you go on to Twitter and you can see that some massive hack attack or cyber breach has happened somewhere. Here in South Africa, you're almost lulled into a false sense of security because very few of these things actually make it um, into the media. And, and I think that that compounds the problem. Uh, and, I, and, I, and I mean, this stuff is happening on a daily basis not just in big business, but, but in smaller entities as well. And, and it's one of these things sitting there thinking 50, almost 50% 50 of companies thinking that it's not going to happen to them. It's absolutely crazy. Yes, you raise a very important point there about awareness. And if you Google cybercrime South Africa and you look at some of uh, the more recent events that have happened, it's big people. It's Life Healthcare. It's Old Mutual. It's the city of Johannesburg. So uh, while it kind of trickles away underground, it is definitely worth noting that um, it's, it's happening. It's out there. I just want to go back to what you were saying about COVID-19 and how that adapts. Uh, you did speak about um, people having to work from home uh, and a lot of people I think also think you know I'm savvy enough I know what's out there I'm not going to click on a bad link but to my surprise when I was looking into this there's a lot out there linked to COVID-19 information as well that people are clicking on and are opening themselves up to risk because of that I mean the hackers have gotten quite smart I think yeah, so that's classic phishing. Um, so this is a perfect time to, to you know, to launch phishing attacks. Um, you know, I mean, would you know that um, an email from the bank, you know, is embedded with code behind it potentially um, that you don't see and that and that you're clicking on that link and it's actually just redirecting to another place, and and that and that in itself is 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 a large part of the issue. Um, you know, people aren't sure. Um, as we said, people are working from home and therefore um, you, not, you don't know, for example, if your data potentially has been compromised. You know, a virus these days isn't the blue screen with a smiley face. Um, you know, it's, it's, an, it's, a, it's, a, it's a Trojan or it's a piece of malware that's going into the system and just sitting and sleeping for a while or is actively just starting to extract data which it's sending elsewhere. So that really is, is where the danger sits. And I think that a lot of people who aren't aware um, aren't also aware what is happening in the background. Um, you, know, you know, your data is technically being migrated out of your server or out of your device or out of your notebook. And it's going to a place where, for example, hackers are building a profile around you. Hackers are building an attack plan to get back into the business to extract funds. That's literally what it is. So you mentioned um, the also, rise. Sorry, oh, yes, sorry, sorry Brian, Simon, go for I, it. I would also just like to just like to comment that, um, you know, one of the, I was trying to find it while, while Simon was talking, but one of the big um, domain providers uh, in the US said that they that had a 30,000% increase um, in the registration of sites 
that had something to do with COVID. And, and, a, and a significant percentage of those they know were set up with no other purpose um, than to provide a little bit of content and then draw people in to get their personal information because that's what people were searching for. We saw it during the World Cup. You know, whatever's going on in the world, the hackers kind of build their strategy around that, which is really clever if you right. think about it. Um, and I, I guess in some respects, we, we'd all been sort of focusing on, on viruses in the cyber environment for years. COVID just reminded us that it's actually a biological thing. But the exponential effect, the way that it grows and the way that it attacks systems, um, there's no difference really between the biological one and the digital one, if you think about it. Absolutely. We know we, we talk a lot about cybercrime. Are there any trends that show um, how the landscape is changing? Is there one type of cybercrime that's becoming uh, more prominent, could we say, uh, in the times uh, that we're facing right now? Or is it an ever-changing landscape and you really have to keep on your toes to um, try and stay ahead um, in actual fact? Yeah, I mean, our simple view on it is it's a virus, right? It mutates itself. Um, is the simple terminology. Um, but we see the hacking landscape move. Um, it's a shifting landscape as generally they're looking for weak spots. Um, right now, the hacking landscape is very definitely attacking employees sitting at home, which then creates a tunnel into, into a company network. But um, right now, it's, it's, the landscape is primarily around phishing. There's no doubt about it. And right now, um, we're seeing the banks uh, under siege. Um, all of the banks, all of our local banks, uh, we're seeing more and more of uh, customer data belonging to the various banks um, uh, available for sale on the dark web. Um, this is where we're seeing a, a big drive at the moment. You highlight banks that are particularly at risk there. Uh, are there other sectors that are more at risk? I'd imagine retail could be a sector that um, comes under fire given the move to online and online shopping as well. Um, Bronwyn, I think that the, you know, there's certainly, a, as we said earlier, the hackers will shift to wherever their activity is. But I think for, for SMEs, um, it's, still, it's still random. You know, so, I mean, what we saw just before COVID was that 25% of SMEs were being hit with ransomware. Um, and those are not normally targeted attacks. Those are, those are people that are, con that are clicking on what is often a fairly convincing email or something on a website and, and getting their data encrypted. Um, so that, that, that's quite a popular um, random crime. Although I think, you know, it would be foolish of us not to assume that there aren't also targeted attacks taking place. As Simon said, on the banking side, um, healthcare has always been a big target overseas, and we've had our first well-publicized case here now. Um, and, and one really needs to look at the value of the data and, and the completeness of it. So we know that, you know, banks, insurance companies, um, healthcare, you, you get you can get very complete personal information there you know id numbers enough to to perpetuate um, uh, you know identity theft on a large scale um, which means people are going to have loans and all sorts of things taken out in their names that's very very valuable data so so yeah i think i think we're maybe just catching up with the rest of the world now um, with some of those targeted sectors like like healthcare I think online retail is is definitely something we've we've had our eye on. I mean, if those guys go offline for 24 hours on Cyber Monday, uh, the losses go into the hundreds of millions quite quickly. Uh, so, so that is also something that that we've certainly been watching from a uh, from a risk carrier perspective in the cyber space. James, we oh, have. Sorry, to... If I could just sorry, just one sure. comment on that. Um, we're also seeing a foray into what were relatively stable, you know, non-cyber type of industry. So, for example, the legal industry, uh, the law firms, we're seeing a huge amount of targeting uh, heading into the law firms, extracting data. Logically, the law firms are holding funds, transferring funds, bond registrations, et cetera, et cetera. 
and we're starting to see more and more data um, on the dark web um, coming out of the law firms now. So it seems no one can escape it. Let's hit pause on the discussion there. We are heading into a short break, but we'll be back right after this. Risk management is at the heart of what we do. Our deep-rooted industry and technical expertise enables us to manage the unique risks your business faces.